A child born before the 37th week of pregnancy is considered premature. In the 21st century, such children receive high-quality medical care and in most cases survive. At the beginning of the 20th century, premature babies were refused at hospitals, since doctors could do nothing to help them. Premature babies often died and everyone accepted it, believing that such children were destined to die. Until a man appeared who found a solution and saved thousands of lives. In this episode of Simple Infographic, we'll tell you about Martin Arthur Cooney, one of the several people in history who used the title of doctor without having a medical background. It's ironic that the man who left such a huge mark on medical development is relatively unknown. Martin Cooney, whose real name was Michael Cohen, was born in Poland in 1869. Throughout his life, he changed the details of his life story. The mysterious past of the doctor was made worse by his lack of an official medical license, which badly affected his reputation. Cooney claimed to have studied in Leipzig and Berlin, and so his European diploma was not applicable in America. However, there's no evidence that he actually studied medicine at any European institution. Some sources claim that Cooney emigrated to the United States in 1988 at the age of 19. But the more popular version of the story is that at the end of the 19th century, he was an apprentice of the famous French obstetrician, Pierre Constant Boudin. At that time, the first incubator for the care of premature babies, the Cuvées, had just been released. It was invented by outstanding French physician Stéphane Tarnier. One day, he went to an agricultural exhibition where there was a demonstration of an incubator for chicken eggs. The innovative invention allowed chicks to be raised without hens, increased livestock, and lightened the workload of poultry farms. Tarnier realized that infants could be cared for in the same way. He built a box and passed an oxygen tube through it. He used coal to maintain a stable temperature and humidity level inside the box, of utmost importance for a child. Although such an invention demonstrated clear benefits, it didn't attract interest. Incubators were expensive to produce, and only the wealthy could afford them. Maternity homes refused to use the strange apparatus, and practically all of Tarnier's colleagues considered his invention unscientific, all except for Boudin and Cooney. In 1896, at Berlin's Great Industrial Exposition, they demonstrated their invention, the Kinderbrutenstalt, or Children's Incubator. The exhibition was a success, and in 1897, Cooney was invited to London to celebrate Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee, where he held his first exhibition of incubators. The importance of the discovery was noted in the Lancet Medical Journal. Editors who attended Cooney's exhibition commented that, although use of incubators is still not widespread in England, the public should welcome every successful attempt to improve their design and make the device available to everyone. After his European triumph, Cooney moved to the USA, where he demonstrated the incubators at the Trans-Mississippi Exposition in Omaha. After that, a many state tour awaited him, including a stop at the Pan American Exposition in Buffalo in 1901. Cooney was especially warmly received in New York. At that time, the megalopolis was struggling to treat newborn babies. The area had many premature infants and children with various illnesses, and the doctors were unable to look after all of them. Cooney rented a room in Luna Park on the shore of Coney Island, where he set up an exhibition under the title Incubators with Live Children. Doctors in medical coats and nurses in white uniforms walked between the rows of glass incubators in which infants were situated. They were born very prematurely, and their chances for survival were very low. The baby's bodies were so small that it was impossible to find them clothing in stores. So the nurses dressed the children in doll clothes and hand-knitted caps. One of the wet nurses on Coney Island later remembered a trick she used to impress the public. In order to emphasize the minuscule size of the infants, she wore a diamond ring on her hand. The exhibition caused a sensation. Visitors flocked to the pavilion. Entrance cost, 10 cents. And every day, the exhibition earned Cooney a fortune. He spent his earnings on the improvements of his product. The doctor also gave some of his money to hospitals, since incubators were not only an innovative invention, but an expensive one. The maintenance of one machine cost $15 per day, which would be around $405 by 2020 standards. Although Cooney was only pretending to be a doctor, he conducted his business with an amazingly professional approach. In becoming a patient of Cooney's, all of the infants underwent the same procedure. First, they were bathed in warm water, then they were given bands that identified their sex pink for girls, and light blue for boys. The babies stayed in the incubators for almost the entire day and were taken out for a couple of hours for feeding. Cooney's incubators were about a meter and a half, or 4.9 feet tall, and were equipped with steel walls, a frame, and a glass front. A special system was developed for the supply of warm air. Pipes were passed underneath the incubators through which warm water was circulated. In order to regulate and maintain the needed temperature, a thermostat lay beside each infant. Cooney also looked after the cleanliness of the air for the infants. In order to filter out harmful particles, the air was first passed through a wool cloth treated with antiseptic, and then through a dry one. The air constantly circulated, maintaining the optimal atmosphere inside the incubator. 
Martin Cooney hired a team of six nurses and two wet nurses who stayed on the exhibition grounds so that they could care for the children at any time. He supported breastfeeding and so developed strict rules for the attending staff. They were not allowed to smoke, drink, or eat harmful foods such as hot dogs, since the doctor believed that this would negatively affect the quality of their breast milk. In 1903, Cooney married Annabelle May, one of his nurses. And in 1907, his own daughter became a participant in his exhibition when she was born six weeks premature and weighed all of 1.4 kilograms, or 3 pounds. Caring for the premature infants was expensive, but Martin never accepted even a cent from the payments of his patients. The stream of visitors was so large that the ticket earnings not only covered all costs of maintenance, but also ensured high salaries for the nurses and allowed for frequent tours around the country. Cooney's displays often changed their names, the most well-known being the Infantorium and Children's Incubators. Martin Cooney's motto was, the whole world loves babies. He encouraged his nurses to embrace the babies in front of the public and to demonstrate their love for them in any way they could. Besides the Infantorium, there was a similarly popular exhibition in Atlantic City which ran from 1905 to 1943. Cooney achieved national success in 1933. At the Century of Progress International Exposition in Chicago, Cooney worked in tandem with the recognized doctor Julius Hess. The construction of the facility cost $75,000, or $1.4 million by 2020 standards. The exhibition ran for 18 months. A huge sign reading, Living Babies and Incubators, could be seen from the other end of the exhibition complex. And Cooney's pavilion was painted with patriotic colors, red, white, and blue. In order to emphasize the importance of using incubators, Cooney organized a homecoming exhibition, which opened on July 25, 1934. Over the course of a year, he and Hess cared for 58 babies, 41 of which were then reunited with their families. This ceremonial event was broadcast live both on local radio and at the exhibition complex. At the end of the summer in 1934, Cooney's initiative earned the support of the Chicago Health Commissioner, and after the end of the exhibition, Chicago became the first American city to offer health care for premature infants. Worth noting is that Martin Cooney accepted any child, regardless of race or social status, which was very ahead of its time in terms of American public opinion. Despite his popularity, Cooney's activities did spark protests among child protection groups, who stated that Cooney was only after monetary gain. As early as 1897, medical journals were accusing Martin of a dishonest way to earn money, since incubators were then kept near animal enclosures whose unsanitary conditions put the lives of the babies at risk. In addition, a shadow was cast on Cooney's reputation by imposters who opened their incubator exhibitions but did not care about the health of the babies. In 1911, there was a fire on Coney Island. Although the exhibition workers managed to save all the infants, the incident revealed the danger of keeping the incubators at the amusement park and brought criticism against the doctor. Throughout his career, as soon as shopping centers or exhibitions closed, Cooney tried to deliver his incubators to local hospitals, but his offers were always turned down. The activities of The Doctor went against eugenics, a pseudoscience aimed at improving the gene pool by eliminating undesirable groups of people. Eugenics, as kind of a selection, was incredibly popular in American medicine. One doctor even made a film called Kill the Defective, Save the Nation. Not until after World War II did eugenics become associated with Nazism and took on an immoral connotation. But in Martin Cooney's time, trade magazines expressed doubt in the effectiveness of incubators and argued that premature babies would pass on their deformities and illnesses to the next generation. The infantoriums were often housed next door to exhibitions glorifying eugenics, and many doctors did not take Cooney's work seriously. Not until 1950, after Cooney's death, did incubators officially become part of childcare. In his defense, Cooney argued that his exhibition was the last chance for survival for many premature babies and that the survival rate of his patients was much higher than in hospitals. According to the doctor, he saved about 6.5 thousand infants, bringing the survival rate up to 85%. The story of one of the incubator patients became the best illustration of his claims. Lucille Horn was born in 1920 and weighed approximately 900 grams. The infant was so small that her father could hold her in the palm of his hand. Her twin died at birth, and the doctors at the hospital believed that Lucille would soon die as well. Her desperate father brought the child to Cooney's attraction, where the doctor took her in for free. And after only six months, a completely healthy Lucille was returned to her family. Years later, the girl returned to the hatchery and introduced herself to her savior. Then, Martin brought her to one of the other fathers, who was observing his own child. Look at this girl. She is one of our children, and your child will grow up just like this, said Cooney. He lived for 80 years and died in 1950 in total poverty, as he had given all of his savings to premature babies. It was his own heirs who buried the imposter doctor. Martin Cooney did not find support for his deeds among his contemporaries. Some considered him a hero while others thought him a cynical monster and accusing him of violating medical ethics. 
Martin didn't respond to the attacks, but silently did his job. And the fact is that this fake doctor saved more lives than many of the most well-known representatives of the medical field. How do you feel about what he did? Did he just want to get rich, or did he really help people despite the public outcry? Share your thoughts in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a like. Subscribe to our channel and click the bell to be the first to know about new episodes. Bring your friends and we'll see you next time.